Okay, now we go deep in into one of the basic, um, very good preparation of Italian cuisine that is called aglio, olio e peperoncino. From garlic, oil and chili pepper, you can just build other two recipes. So this is something that you should know. So you start with the crushing of the garlic. Crushing means try to smash, but not too much. So smash it in order to loosen the skin and to have something like nice peeled within one second. Then you chop the garlic very thin in small slices. You don't need to mince it. Then, what do you do? Usually, in my kind of recipes, I don't really like to start with olive oil at the beginning, but in this case, you need extra virgin olive oil, that is the basic of Mediterranean Italian cuisine, in order to reach that kind of nice temperature, in order that the garlic gets kind of very infused and very tasty. So you put the olive oil inside, shake it a little, go up with flame reaching a very high flame, and then you throw all the garlic in, you wait until the garlic starts to make that kind of nice noise and starting to get golden brown. In the meantime, shake the pan. Never let the garlic too much on the pan with fire, you know, paying not too much attention because if it gets burned, you have to throw it away and then you have to start again. And it is something that is not very nice. So once the garlic gets golden brown, what do you do? You take a little bit of parsley, I like to do that. Get an eye on the garlic, it's very important. The parsley already washed, gets chopped very nicely and quickly chopped, not too minced. Eh? Try to keep that kind of rustic touch. Put it in and you hear the noise. That is something amazing. You, don't, you cannot smell it, but it's very nice. Once this comes out, you take a little bit of water, put it in to avoid the splattering. Shake, shake, shake. And now take a nice big chili pepper. You cut the two sides, make an incision in the middle, okay? Remove the seeds because the seeds are very, very hot. Sometimes are too hot. Chop very thin, exactly like you did with the garlic. You add it inside and you already made a sauce. This is a sauce, so within two minutes. My advice, always shake the pan, because in this case you create that kind of smooth consistency. Now, if you like this sauce like that, cook your spaghetti, spaghetti is the best pasta, put it in the sauce, firm to the bite, saute for a few minutes, and then serve it to me with a nice shave of Parmigiano Reggiano on top because by themselves they're very, very good, but with a little nice shave of Parmigiano Reggiano will be much more you know, intense in terms of flavor. If you don't have fresh peperoncino, chili pepper, you can use absolutely paprika, you can use just dried peperoncino, whatever you have in terms of making kind of spicy. You can even use black pepper too, a little toasted, but it's gonna be good at the same time. We can make other two sauces starting with that. One is just with fresh, Cherry tomatoes, I use cherry tomatoes because it's very sweet in season and you have these kind of very small seeds that makes it very sweet but at the same time acidic. It's very easy, the sauce is still boiling, you get a serrated knife because it works better. Put the cherry tomatoes on top of your cutting board. And my advice is to cut all the tomatoes first. If you're not very fast, what do you do? Start to put the tomatoes in because otherwise the sofrito starts to burn and it's not very nice. Otherwise, if you're fast enough, you can even just cut all of them together. So cut the tomatoes, put it in. Another one. Then, saute, as usual. Salt, pepper, flame, at this point, very high. So try to reach the maximum. If you don't have induction system like we have, and it's very normal to find houses without induction, you put the very high flame, shake it a little, saute a little, then a little bit of water. Water helps so much putting down the temperature once it's very high and giving that kind of braising, you know, kind of texture. Then this needs a little more herbs on my kind of taste. In this case, I would like to add a very tiny bit of mint and a little 
be the basil too. These two herbs is the one that I prefer because they're very similar. Not similar in taste, but similar in interaction within the dishes. So you put them one on another, give it a nice chop, very quick, add it. 10 seconds. Fire off. This is ready. The best pasta in this case is penne or something short, but with some stripes over so that gets the sauce much, much better. Something made with a big, you know, nice selection of datum wheat in order to have always the firm to the bite consistency. Now, the fresh tomato sauce with garlic, basil, chili pepper, and a few herbs is ready. It's ready once this kind of sauce that you have around starts to be kind of you know, a uh, brick color and very creamy. So what do you do? If you want to transform nicely this sauce to another basic and fantastic Italian sauce that is called Sorrentina, because it's mainly originally made from the Sorrento, you know, area, what do you have to do? You have, first of all, to remove it from the fire, let it cool down a little. In the meantime, you, we have a nice mozzarella here. You slice the mozzarella. You slice the mozzarella in very thin slices. Then from the slices you get kind of, you know, matches. And then you get cubes. Because this mo mozzarella will just mainly go in the pasta together with the fresh sauce and a little bit of basil, more basil, to make this fa famous Sorrentina sauce. Very easy to be made. You add just a little bit of fresh mozzarella. It, it doesn't matter if that is buffalo. It can be very normal, you know, um, mozzarella that is called fior di latte. So what do you do? That is the sauce. I'll show you. Saute a little bit. You make it very creamy. You play the sauce like that. Try to imagine in here a very nice taram with pasta fresh, like orecchiette or cavatelli or fusilli. And you top it with a nice amount of mozzarella, with a nice slice of basil on top and a drip of olive oil. That's something amazing, guys, believe me.